Hi, I'm Jeremy Huss, owner of Huss Law. Today I am talking about the five most common DUI defenses that may be asserted. These defenses, in no particular order, are 1. The driver was not in actual physical control of the motor vehicle. 2. There was no reasonable suspicion for the police to stop the driver's vehicle. 3. The police denied the driver of the right to counsel during the investigation. 4. The breath testing instrument is not accurate. And 5. The blood collection and storage is faulty or the procedure or testing is not accurate. If successful, any of these five defenses could result in dismissal due to the state not being able to prove DUI beyond a reasonable doubt. However, the issues underlying these defenses are not always obvious and require an analysis by an experienced DUI attorney. Analyzing DUI defenses generally consists of reviewing police reports, intoxilizer or blood draw records, and possibly conducting interviews. Let's talk about each one of these five most common DUI defenses in greater detail, again, in no particular order. First, the driver was not in actual physical control of the motor vehicle. All Arizona DUI offenses require a person to be either driving or in actual physical control of a motor vehicle. This situation most often arises when a person is sleeping in their vehicle or the vehicle is somehow disabled. Actual physical control is not an issue when a vehicle is in motion typically. To determine whether a person was in actual physical control of a vehicle, the courts look at the totality of the circumstances. To determine totality, Arizona DUI case law has identified factors to assist in analyzing actual physical control. The goal of these factors is to determine whether a driver was using the vehicle as a stationary shelter or whether the driver actually posed a threat to the public by having actual physical control of the vehicle, which could imminently be placed into the flow of traffic. Some of the factors in determining actual physical control are whether the vehicle was running or the ignition was on, location of the key, where and in what position the driver was found in the vehicle, whether the driver was awake or asleep, if the headlights were on, location the vehicle was stopped, whether the driver had voluntarily pulled off the road, the time of day and weather conditions, the heater or air conditioner on, whether the windows were up or down, and any explanation of these circumstances. Now, this is not an exhaustive list of factors in determining whether a driver is in actual physical control. However, they are the most common factors analyzed in making the actual physical control determination. The second most common DUI defense is that the police did not have reasonable suspicion to conduct the traffic stop. Under the Fourth Amendment to the United States Constitution, Law enforcement may not conduct an unreasonable search or seizure. A traffic stop is considered a seizure, and to conduct a seizure, law enforcement must articulate a reasonable suspicion. A reasonable articulable suspicion is not a high standard, but it is more than a mere hunch. A reasonable articulable suspicion justifying a traffic stop would be any type of traffic violation. Three miles per hour the posted speed limit, failing to use a turn signal, following another vehicle too closely, or making too wide of a turn. Now, making too wide of a turn is a common justification for a traffic stop resulting in DUI arrests. If a driver turns from an inside lane into an outside lane or vice versa, law enforcement may conduct a traffic stop. It is important for any person charged with DUI to have an experienced DUI attorney analyze and review the reports to determine whether a traffic stop was supported by reasonable suspicion. An issue for no reasonable suspicion for the traffic stop is raised in a pretrial motion. And if a person is successful on this motion, the traffic stop and all evidence obtained as a result will be suppressed. This will generally leave the state in a position it must dismiss the case. The third most common DUI defense is the police violated a person's right to counsel. All people have a right to consult with an attorney during a criminal investigation. This right exists before and after an arrest. However, limitations do exist on this constitutional right if it unreasonable delays or impedes a DUI investigation. This issue most often arises in DUI cases after the admin per se implied consent affidavit is read and prior to driver's submission to a chemical breath or blood test.
Oftentimes, a driver has to consult with an attorney prior to submitting to the chemical test. Although law enforcement must honor a driver's right to counsel, this right cannot unreasonably delay or impede a DUI investigation. Basically, to comply with one's right to counsel during a DUI investigation, law enforcement must provide a driver with a phone book and phone to consult with an attorney. But a driver does not have unlimited time and may not delay the investigation. Blood and breath evidence may dissipate quickly. Because of this, the law allows the police to obtain a search warrant to extract blood should the driver unreasonably delay. However, there is a fine line and law enforcement may not unconstitutionally interfere with a driver's right to counsel. A denial of a right to counsel issue is raised in a pretrial motion, and success on this motion results in suppression of the blood or breath test results, or for the case to be in dismissed entirely. The fourth most common DUI defense is asserting that the breath test is not accurate. Breath tests determine the amount of breath alcohol in a person's lungs and provides measurement of the blood alcohol level. However, this is not a direct measurement of blood alcohol and may result in an inaccurate breath test reading. There are numerous factors that may impact a person's breath test reading to cause higher false reads. First, there is a 10% error rate that is acknowledged by state criminalists and experts. Second. A person's core body temperature and end expired breath temperature makes a difference of nearly 10% for each degree different from what the breath test estimates. Third, individual blood composition is variable and may impact breath testing. Specifically, whole blood is a solid particle mixture in liquid suspension. Because alcohol is water soluble, the higher concentration of liquid in the driver's blood impacts the amount of alcohol present. Fourth, the breath test does not test for alcohol only. Rather, it tests for any molecule with a carbon-hydrogen bond. Because of this, the breath test may detect several non-alcohol substances found on human breath. And a fifth common factor impacting breath test is the test assumes there is a predictable ratio, 2100 to 1, of alcohol, alcohol in the blood and vapor above it when heated. However, there are numerous studies suggesting this is not scientifically accurate. Some of the other factors that may impact the breath test are presence of mouth alcohol, diabetes, and other health issues as well as breathing patterns. Moving to suppress breath test results generally occurs prior to trial. However, issues may arise during trial that prevent admissibility. A successful motion on this issue will result in suppression of the breath test results. The fifth most common DUI defense is asserting the blood test is not accurate. Unlike breath tests, blood testing directly measures the level of alcohol in the blood. However, this does not necessarily mean blood testing is more accurate. Rather, there are multiple avenues to challenge blood testing. This includes challenging collection and analysis of the blood sample, storage and transportation of the sample, as well as analyzing sample preparation and methods employed or not employed by the state crime lab. There could also be issues with contamination and differences in analyses between venous and arterial blood draws, along with differences in analyses between whole blood and plasma and outside contaminants. Although blood testing may be the most potentially accurate chemical test, there are possibilities for inaccuracies and errors. We've just spent the last few minutes discussing the five most common DUI defenses. Although there may be additional and different DUI defenses, these are the five most commonly asserted. Each case is different and defenses depend on a fact-intensive inquiry. DUIs carry severe penalties in Arizona. If a DUI defense is available, it is imperative that it is identified and asserted. Because of this, any person charged with a DUI or under investigation for a DUI should consult with an experienced DUI attorney, like the attorneys at Hus Law. Call us today for a free consultation.